example, notice the direction to find the slope of each line. We're going to find the slope of each line and then we're asking to determine if those two lines are parallel to each other. All right, so why would the slope of each line to answer this question? Because we looked at the idea of that last theorem that we looked at was if we know that the slopes are the same, that, or sorry it's a postulate, so if we know that the slopes are the same then the lines are parallel. Yeah. Okay, so if I know the slope of each then I would know if they're parallel or not. Okay, mm -hmm. so the idea is to see if the same slope or not. That's really the question if you think about it. Okay. Okay, so let's do line in first, and we're going to find the slope of that line. And the fact that they're giving the coordinate, um, the order pairs, and not actually the graph, the best way to do this is to use the Slope, slope formula. formula. Okay, so how, tell me what I would write down here. We're finding the M of M. Mm -hmm. I think that's I pretty know, funny. I know, it is kind of funny. All right, <laughs> so I know that I want to do the Y2 minus Y1 over X2 minus X1, that slope formula. And I'm going to go ahead and start with, I'm going to call it just the first ordered pair listed up there, my first ordered pair, and the second one, my second ordered pair. So I'm going to say that my Y2 would be my 4 minus my negative 3. Well, minus a negative is really plus 3. So you could write 4 minus a negative 3 or like Ms. Hogarby said just do 4 plus 3 and we kind of did that um, when we did uh, the distance, distance formula, formula sure, in chapter yeah. 1. Okay and then over and then we want to do the difference in the x value so I'm going to take negative 1 again minus a negative 4 would be plus 4. We do, okay now one thing I want to comment on is notice that I labeled, Ms. Hograby kind of said something that made me <laughs> kind of remember. Make sure you label which line is which, all right? So communicating that you're saying this is line M slope, all right? And then we'll do the same thing for line N. That way we know exactly which slope represents what. It's a lot of, it's good to label that kind of stuff. Absolutely. So. All right, so let's simplify this. So okay, this so 4 plus you, 3 7 over 3 and 7 thirds. I can't really simplify anymore, so we're just going to leave that as 7 I thirds. I wouldn't put it as like 2 and a third. No, we don't need to. No, slope okay. we want to try to keep is rise and rise run. Rise over run. Perfect. Yeah. So there's a slope of line M. Let's do line N. Do you want to stick with this first, sure. second? Okay. Okay, so here I'm going to take 1 minus a negative 1 will be plus 1 over 3 minus our 2. So this so is going to be 2. two over 1, well, those are not the same, so... Can I just say 2? Oh, yeah, I can just say 2. Yeah. Sorry. That's oh, yeah. Mean. They're not the same, though. I'm just looking. It's not 7 over yeah. 3. These aren't the same. So, so the lines are not parallel. And my reason, if they'd ask for a reason, would just be because they do not have the same slopes. Yeah, if they said explain, you would say um, they don't have the same slopes. So really we're just looking for at their slopes. There's nothing else. I don't even need to write the equation of these lines. They didn't no. ask for that. No. They just wanted me to look at those slopes to determine because that's all we really need to determine if lines are parallel. Now this next example says we're going to write an equation. So here's where all of those forms of the equation of a line are mm -hmm. helpful. We're going to write the equation of a line that goes through this point of 4, 9 and has a slope of negative 2. Notice that right now we're not talking about parallel lines. We're just really practicing of can we write an equation. And that's so kind of a little bit of practice from last year. Yes. So given a point and a slope. I'm we, thinking point slope form We're going to start in point slope form. Now there is another way that you can do this and we'll do that in a second too. Perfect. But let's start with, because we've got a point and a slope, let's start in point slope form. That seems logical. Okay. What am I going to do? All right, so point slope is saying y minus y1. So it would be y minus. Now, the y1 is the y coordinate of your point, which is 9. And I'm going to say equals your m is your slope. I'm so sure negative m. 2. And then the quantity, so parentheses. And it's x minus x1. So that's your x coordinate, which is 4. Great. So, yeah, just like she said, it's y minus the y value of your point is equal to the slope times the quantity of x minus the x value of your point. Now it just says write the equation of a line. That's essentially an equation, right? But you do need to rewrite it. Let's go ahead and rewrite Which it. basically means just to get y by itself. So let's distribute first. And you get y minus 9 equals negative 2x plus 8. And then add 9 to both sides. And I get y equals negative 2x plus 17. And there's your equation. 
in slope intercept form, which okay. is your final answer. Perfect. Now, there's another way we could have done this. Yes. And I know that some people in middle school, they really preferred this method, and some people really preferred point slope method. We don't really care which one you use, just so long as you can get to your equations. That's going to be the important yes. part. I typically, I love point slope form because to me, I'm just starting out with my equation. I don't have to really do a whole lot of finding things. Mm -hmm. And then it's just a matter of distribution and mm -hmm. move a piece over. But if I wanted to start in slope intercept form, do we have enough information to just write it in this form? No, because we don't know the y intercept. Okay. So what we do know is the slope. So if I just put like y equals, I know I would have a what? Negative 2x plus b. But Too really that's knows. the only things that we know. We don't, yeah, we don't know x, we don't know y, we don't know b. But what do x and y in that equation represent? Well, it represents any point that's on that line. And we do have And they a have point. a point. So essentially, we do know what x and y. But see, x and y can be basically any point on that line. And they give you one. So we're going to put the 9 in for the y and the 4 in for x. And notice the unknown still is your y-intercept because they never gave it to you. Right. But now I could actually solve for that y-intercept, which would allow me to then write our equation in a slope-intercept form that can be true for any point. Okay, so this would be 9 equals negative 8 plus b, so then b equals 17. Now, here's what this is one reason why I, I'm also a bigger <laughs> fan of point-slope form, because now you got to remember that you got to do something with it. Some people want to just stop there. we got to put that back in for the b and now my equation is still y equals negative 2x plus 17, which is essentially what we got. Yeah. You can do either method. method. To me, this almost seems like it's a little bit more work to yeah. do it the second way. Yeah. And like Mrs. Palermo said, we see this a lot where kids stop at the set b equals 17. And that's not really what we were trying to find was just a y-intercept. Mm -hmm. We want to write the whole equation. So if you do this method, don't forget to actually get to that final answer. Okay. That's going to be the important part. Now, what we just did on the last one is going to be helpful on this one because the whole point is we're talking about parallel lines and what the slope involves. So notice this uh, example says line K or A is parallel to line K. So right away we know, okay, parallel means it'll never intersect. We have obviously all that stuff about corresponding angles. All that, but this one's dealing with coordinate planes. So what do you think about when you see parallel and dealing with a coordinate plane? That they have the same slope. So that's what we're going to keep that in the back of our mind. Now, they tell you line K's equation, so they're giving you the equation, we're not writing one just yet, is that. So when you look at that equation, it's in slope-intercept form. Um, we know slope, we know y-intercept, things like that. Let's move on. It says line A passes through this point. So this is the point we know that line A has. Okay. Now, if line A and K are parallel, Oh, then they're going to have the same slope. They're going to have the same slope. So what in, in this equation, what does this equation, I mean, what's the point of it? Is that the equation of line A? No, but it should have the same slope. So I'm looking at that slope-intercept form, and I know that slope is 2 fifths. This is the slope. So this that means that's the slope of line K. So that's also the slope of line A yes. because they have that same slope. Okay, so this is the slope we're using for both line K, obviously, and line a as well, right? Does that plus 3 mean anything? Well, hopefully our new equation won't have a plus 3 because otherwise it would be the exact same line. So yeah, this y-intercept really just tells you the placement of that mm -hmm. line on the coordinate plane, but it's not going to help us really when we're looking at our new line. We just hope it's not the exact okay. same piece. So this is the piece we're the taking from here. So what... What information do we know about line A? What things do we have about it? Well, we know a point and we know a slope now. We have a point and a slope. So I think I'm about... I'm thinking point-slope form. Let's do point-slope form. Just and again, if you of... prefer the solve for B method, you can. Yes, we're just going to show we're you this do way. Point so point-slope form would be... Y minus, and I want the Y value of my order pair, so Y minus zero. Okay. Is equal to, we said our slope was two-fifths times the quantity of x minus, now the x value is a negative 5, so minus a negative 5 is going to be a plus 5. This is your x1, y1, so this would be plus 5, okay? Now, we don't want to stop there. What are we going to do? We're going to make sure our answers are always going to be in slope-intercept form. Okay. So, first of all, y minus 0, that's just y. So that's easy. And now I want to distribute, so I'm going to say 2 fifths x, and 2 fifths times 5 is just going to give us 2. 
and you're done. Notice how quick that was. And a piece of cake.